English, English language, <laughs> etymology of black. So if you're going to speak English, you at least need to know that the root of that language, there's frequency, there's meaning, and it's for you to break the spell, to break the curse. If you really want to succeed and burst about this thing, man, wake up out this thing, man, be aware, my naga, etymology of black. Oh, man. <laughs> hey, if you go back far enough in time, the word black used to mean white and has the same origins as the French blanc, like blanco, like bleach. Blanc, blanco, is black, is white. Got it, got it, got it, my naga. Because for some reason, man, as we digging on this, we're just realizing it takes a white to create a white and a black to create a black. The word black has its origins, man. I mean, the word black, which meant pale, wan, or colorless. Black power is colorless power. They got you speaking black. You're speaking English, right? We speak in English? Oh, yeah, yeah. This is the English language usage etymology. Black is colorless, albino. Ka, ka, ka. Yeah, so not until around 1051, <laughs> or only at that time, it still meant fair skin or so called white person. <laughs> Black is a so-called white. Uh-oh. But black in 1828, black also meant atrociously wicked, horrible. It got to speak in black talk instead of speaking tribal talk. I'm not against my uh, Negro Nagas, but we're not black. Even as a color, it didn't even mean a color until recently. It just meant wicked in the language you're still speaking. We got to get about this, man. We can't have atrocious, atrociously wicked lives mattering, right? Black lives matter. Horrible lives matter. This is what you're saying, even if it's not what you mean. But it takes a white to create a white and a black to create a black. And just know that, yeah, man, this modern word black still meant fair skin or a white. But what is a white? Oh, you got to change the spelling because <laughs> you're speaking a spell, a curse. A white is a creature, a person, a human. Well, then what are we? Because we're not no demon monsters. We ain't no devils. So our ancestors said white devil. They were referring to an actual white devil. <laughs> not color, because these people ain't white by color. <laughs> they are black by action, by deed. As in the crime on the America, black is white, right? Because black meant pale, colorless, or albino. But if black is wicked, all right, and white is a demon, monster, devil, <laughs> then a white devil is a wicked black, and a black is a white, which is why black is man colorless black and white are the same both black and white stem from the common root from the common root because black used to mean white and i keep saying it takes a black to create a black and a white to create a white Love the hood, the hood. <laughs> General Magma, take the wheel. Now who cares to go next? Like General Magma, orders the chop next. 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 It took Yakub 
600 years to manufacture his tribe of pale evil albinoids on the Isle of Pelon. Uh-oh. And every imagination of their heart, and all of their actions, were wicked continuously. The evilness of the albinoids not only affected themselves, but also affected the other peoples of the world. The albinoids entered the holy city of Mecca in the year 9000 oh. because Yaqub taught them that... So the whites that were created by the blacks, or the whites... <laughs> Right, they created 600 years. I mean, this might not answer the entire 64 million dollar question as to you know, a lot of people asking where do whites come from? You know, are we talking W H I T E as in pure, or are we talking W I G H T? And this ain't against all so called whites, we're just getting to the root of it all for a certain breed that seemed to be real toxic on the melanated Nagas here, and if they were created and sent first into Mecca, uh-oh, then that means the more and more war brought them to your shore. And they came as servants to the Moor, <laughs> who created biological chemical war machines that only knew evil. Then they wanted to control them, <laughs> but who got the control today? Think about it, man. Think about it, man. Tribe of pale evil albinoids on the Isle of Pelon. And every imagination of their heart and all of their actions were wicked continuously. The evilness of the albinoids not only affected themselves, but also affected the other peoples of the world. The albinoids entered the holy city of Mecca in the year 9000 because Yaqub taught them that Mecca was their home. Uh oh. Once back in the city, it took only six months for the albinoids <laughs> to... So Mecca is the home of the albinoid. That's what they were taught. That's why they got a rock with Morocco. Cause chaos and war amongst the ebonoid people. Uh oh. You thought, uh, you thought it was play play. Yeah, see, the tribes of Moab have been confederate against the tribes of Israel, and since we know America is the ancient world, the promised land, you got to wonder who sent them on us here. The king of the Ebonoid people realized that it was the albinoids who were causing all the trouble, and the king made a decree to exile the evil albinoids from amongst them. The king put his strongest, toughest, and most wow. unyielding soldier in charge of exiling the evil. Holding the chop chop. So we might be talking more recent history than we think. Evil albinoids from amongst the ebonoid people. This legendary soldier's name was General Monk Monk. Although his name has been pronounced variously over time as General Muck Muck and General Muck Mud. General Monk Monk rounded up all of the evil albinoids there in the east and took them down to the edge of the desert. Now they're walking around Europe, Switzerland, Poland, right? I mean, all right, so, but they had to make a million man march to get there. Desert where they were stripped of everything, stripped of the sciences we taught them, stripped of our books they stole from us, and stripped of their clothing. But lambskin aprons were put on them to hide their nakedness. General Monk Monk stripped them of everything and left them with nothing but their language of telling lies and stealing. General Monk Monk put the evil albinoids in chains and put cable toes around their necks in preparation to drive them out of the land of light across the burning hot sands of the desert into the mountains, hills, and caves of beasts in what is now called Europe. General Monk Monk rode a white horse and he carried a high-powered rifle and a sharp sword of light. The other soldiers in the army of General Monk Monk... A sword of light. He got a lightsaber and a rifle, man. Is it play play? <laughs> Monk rode on camels, and they carried long, sharp swords in their hands. Members of the army of General Monk Monk were ebonoid people who had fell a victim to the schemes of the evil albinoids. So this is how they got them back Get for back. the hard times they received from the evil albinoids. General Monk Monk and his army made the evil albinoids walk every step of the way as they crossed the hot burning sand. Behold a pale white horse. ...ends of the desert. General Monk Monk would make the evil albinoids run when the sun was high in the sky at high noon. The evil albinoids would jump up and down as their feet would burn on the hot sand. Ask an ebonoid mason, when he crossed the burning sands, was he walking or riding? 
If he says he was walking, then he is a fool, because he was riding. He was riding horseback. He was riding camel back. It was the albinoid that had on the cable toe. It was the albinoid that had on the apron. So all the rituals today, right? I mean, anyone who's crossed them sands, were you walking or riding? <laughs> damn, damn, damn. It was the albinoid that was walking the white sand 6,000 years ago. Whoa. A lot of the evil albinoids died. So they twisted everything and regurgitated it back to us, and we learned it back from them, which is why we got it in reverse. Got it. From exhaustion, dehydration, and sunburn in the desert, General Monk Monk expected all of the albinoids to die when he was running them out of the east. But those fools lived, brother. They lived. At night, General Monk Monk would make the evil albinoids walk. They did not stop, day or night. If one of the albinoids fell to the sand, General Monk Monk would take them by their head and slay them right there on the spot, man or woman. It did not matter. They did not stop. They did not take a break. The albinoids had to walk every step of the way until they reached an oasis 1,100 miles from yeah. where they started. At this oasis, General Monk Monk allowed the albinoids to rest, eat, and drink some water, for they had another 1,100 miles to go before they reached their final destination. This was the first million man march, Whoa. when General Monk Monk made a million albinoids march across the burning hot sands of the desert. After reaching the second oasis, the whole group of albinoids was acting savage like animals. General Monk Monk oh, had covered 2,200 miles and was in the land of what they now call Turkey. Whoa. Once General Monk Monk let the albinoids loose, the albinoids ran wild up into the caves and hillsides. They tore off their apron, walked on all fours, and lived a beastly way of life. General Monk Monk and his army stayed there in Asia Minor, Turkey and the Straits of the Dardanelles to guard the border to make sure that the evil albinoids did not try to enter back into the land of peace. Anytime one of the evil albinoids would try to ease out of the cage and try to make it back to the land of light, oh, General shit. Monk Monk would cut off Damn. their head. The <laughs> army of hey, I can't make this shit up. And why did they drop him off in Turkey, man? And then you got to research the Bezin team that was taken out one year after the Papa Bull. Doom Dive versus 1452 and 1453. Down goes the best in team, and you're going to drop them off in Turkey. And then what? Drop them off in America. Now they got uh, Thanksgiving cutting their heads off the turkeys to get back at the Turks. Who are the more? That's some more or more war, man. Love again, a hood to hood for just bringing this back. I had to get it again. <laughs> like it's the first time. Hey, shout out to. Uh, uh, you know, Allah's school in Mecca, man. All right, all right, yeah, man. You know, shout out the surf to wave for the dismount. Uh -huh. And they talk about the Turks. The Turks is actually a whole band of people, a whole band of tribes. Okay, okay. And so, the families. now mind you, the Turks back then did not look, look like the Turks we see today. They were darker people, you know, and so. You gotta think about this. There's no such thing as an Afro Turk. Just like there's no such thing as an Afro, uh, re you know, the, that's Afro shit is a misnomer. Mm. Mm. So those are the, the original Turks were black. Mm. Right. So check this out. This was ill about it. They were running, they were running the devil west into the caves. Whites. Right, the devil kept trying to go further east. W I G H T. So, that's why they paint Genghis Khan like a savage and a monster. <laughs> because every time that they try to, you know, pop their head about the cage, he came in like, he came in with the, the storm. <laughs> Alright, so he had to control what they created. They had to control their creation. If Mega did this. America. Because we are the ones that'll wake up the rest of the world. Talking about the supreme being, black man in Asia, yeah. black man here in North America. Yeah. Because we are the ones that'll wake up the. And who, what son are they talking? They talking about the son of man. They talking about the supreme being, black man in Asia. Black man in Asia. Or we're talking about the copper color con. And where's Asia? South America. Asia. South America. 
North America is Asia. Uh-oh.